deal with some of those differences and try to point out some, uh, some ways that uh, systems that are things you might have used on a larger farm are not going to work on a smaller farm just because of, uh, because of a variety of reasons. And then we're going to provide to you a, a, little, a couple of little templates you might be able to use, a couple of examples of simplified nutrient management plans. And one of, the, one of those is very helpful, and another one is a, a computer-based uh, system that we're using, uh, currently using here in, in, uh, in our state. I think it's loading, Jill. It says that it is. Um, I'm not in the meeting room anymore. I got uh, kicked out of it. So I'm, Alex will have to help you. Are you there, Alex? Go ahead and. Uh... Yes, hi, I'm here. Um... Okay, now it's coming up, I think. Apologize to everybody. Now we'll advance. Yes, it advances for me. Okay, uh, let's let's move on. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some nutrient management practices uh, for smaller farms, and we're going to especially target on on doing a nutrient how you do a nutrient management plan on a smaller farm. This is a a, a flow chart that you might uh, that you might use on a uh, on putting together a nutrient management plan, and it's, and it's the basic kind of content you might want to have uh, when doing a nutrient management plan. However, let me point out a couple of things that are on this that d d just indicates to us this is that, that deal dealing with a smaller farm, a, a nutrient management plan on a smaller farm is going to be uh, oftentimes more simplified and there's not going to be the, as much access to information. A couple of examples of this, um, manure source information. Most, most farms are probably not going to take uh, regular manure samples, smaller farms. Um, that's one thing. Secondly, they're probably not going to be able to come up with a real good estimate of how much manure they produce, either through the size of their manure storage structure. Their manure storage structure might be as, uh, as simple as a lot of this information is, may not be as, as helpful uh, on, on a smaller farm. An another example, and we'll talk about it later, is in, in terms of, the, of, of developing a phosphorus index on all fields on, fields on a farm. Smaller farm, you, you may not have that kind of uh, expertise or time or uh, uh, whatever just to, to do that, to do something like that. Uh, at the same time, we would we'd encourage a smaller farmer to have an, a, a good idea of, of what are the potential risks on the farm. So when working on a small farm, um, doing nutrient management planning, it's gonna, very often uh, what we're developing is something that's going to be uh, simpler than it's going to be in a larger farm. So I, I thought we'd start uh, this afternoon with a, a little example, and, and I made it uh, uh, similar to some smaller farms we might see here in, in this state, um, 30 adult horses and 10 growing beef steers. That would be fairly common to, to see a farm that had some, you know, 20 or 30 adult horses and had something of another species as well, uh, whether it's steers or whether it's uh, sheep or goats, and uh, primarily grazed, um, maybe no tilled land at all. And how much manure? Uh, how much manure is produced on that farm? Nitrogen, phosphorus produced. How will we incorporate that manure in a in a spreading plan? And we're going to see, use this same little example throughout um, uh, when we deal with a couple of simplified examples that you might use in your work. Uh, we use the same example. So the first thing we might do on a farm like this is determine how many animal units there are, and determine how much manure, nitrogen, and phosphorus are produced. Well, in the case of a small farm. It's very likely we're, we're going to use, um, or, or may be likely that we're going to use book values. If we don't have access to or good, consistent access to, to manure uh, co nutrient content testing information, we'll probably use book values. And that's what these are. These are book values. Um, same for the beef cows in, in the, the example. Then we're going to total everything up, and then we're going to and we're going to determine based on what our uh, uh, 
nutrient uptakes are. We're going to put our information into a spreadsheet such as this, which is going to calculate for us how much manure we need to spread on a on a given uh, plot of land. Okay, for for this. Back to our example, you know, we've got nearly 400 tons of manure, 3,500 uh, 3, pounds of nitrogen, 800 pounds of phosphorus. It's important to remember that these are excreted, not removed estimates since they're book values. Book values are generally going to give us excreted uh, estimates, not removed. In this particular example, I don't make any kind of adjustments for that. I just uh, put out the excreted uh, and we use that uh, for our calculation. Of course, if that manure had sat in a, in a manure storage pad for, for, um, for six months or a year, then, then certainly that excreted value is not, not, so, not so useful anymore, particularly for nitrogen and particularly for the total, total amount of manure. But, but in this case, well, this is a, a traditional approach. You'd, uh, we determine, uh, in this case, these farms are putting all their, their uh, manure back on, on pastures. One case is a hay. The other case is that they're actually spread it, spreading it on pasture land. Which is, is, is on smaller farms, oftentimes smaller farms don't really have a, a lot of area for spreading, and, and often the manure is going to get spread back on, on pasture land. So in this case, um, here's what our phosphorus removal is based on two tons of yield on this pasture, three tons on this one. And if we just calculate out um, our numbers, that would work out to uh, on this pasture, six, six tons uh, per acre and nine tons per acre if we spread at one and a half uh, time spreading rate, nine tons and 14 tons if we spread at uh, one and a half time spreading rate. So that's a kind of a simple example of a, of a nutrient management plan on a small farm. I want to talk now about some, some other issues to, to remember. And, and like I said, at the, end of the, at the end of this section, we'll talk about some simplified uh, ways of doing the example we just showed you. Of course, it's important to, to remember on, on any farm, you've got inputs and you've got outputs on the farm. One of the challenges for small farms, particularly horse farms, is that uh, they maybe not maybe don't have a whole lot of outputs. You go to a dairy farm and you've got milk, you've got uh, outputs. You go to a poultry farm, you've got eggs, you've got outputs. But here on this dairy farm you, or a horse farm, you may not have a lot of outputs. So oftentimes what comes on the farm yeah. maybe stays on the farm. So unless there's a way for them to dispose of the manure off the farm or if they've got lots of some tillable acres that are available to them to spread on, uh, for crops, uh, it, it, there, there's a real challenge in how they're going to and how they're going to manage manage their manure, and that's illustrated very well in this example from um, from Sue Klausner at uh, Cornell University a few years ago. If you look at this, you'll see that the 45 cow dairy cow herd and the 1300 dairy cow herd had approximately the same amount of uh, nitrogen remaining on the farm um, after uh, when they did a nitrogen balance on the farm. And this is something that's it, we should we should remember this um, this data, particularly on a small farm, which may not have these outputs. So, challenge on the small farm is how are we going to deal with those nutrients that come on the farm uh, and stay on the farm? And, and there's no real plan for how to export those out as as product or as find a, a system for exporting manure off the farm. Okay, go ahead, Fred. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm just going to reiterate some of the distinctions of a small farm. Some we've covered and. and some might be new, and I'll go through them rather quickly because I don't really want to be done. I already know a small farm, smaller numbers of livestock. Very often, normal waste storage structure. Um, very usually uh, a smaller amount of land available for grazing, so there's more of a potential for a concentrated situation, uh, bare soil, uh, a concentrated manure, and greater potential for runoff, also soil compaction because of that. Uh, Uh, certainly smaller amount of land available for spreading. Uh, we're not used to working with uh, growers, livestock producers that don't have uh, a lot of crops. And you're always thinking of all the corn fields to get rid of that manure. Most of the times you're not going to have that. So of course, greater potential for runoff there. Very often the operator has less experience in waste management because it's not a, a lifelong uh, agricultural enterprise. It may be a hobby farm not usually the main source of income. You may be closer to neighbors and greater concerns for runoff uh, onto the adjoining property and certainly odor. 
could be a limited budget for manure storage and handling. And sometimes you, you may have the other extreme where you've got a very affluent situation when it's a, a hobby farm. Uh, either situation can, can be a challenge depending on the individual. Much more than you would see with a typical large scale operation, uh, the disposal of manure off site can be a, a very real method and a technically sound method of disposing of the manure so that you're not creating environmental problems. Uh, we have some situations where regional composting facilities have been set up and they're working quite well. So often it could be just going into a dumpster and being picked up on a schedule and then the uh, manure is converted into compost for beneficial reuse and a, a marketing opportunity for, for someone. Uh, On-site composting has been used on some of these small operations, but it's very, it's very important that a producer understand the distinction between simply stockpiling manure and thinking that it's composting and understanding that composting is a very specific process. You've got to have the correct blend of temperature, uh, carbon, nitrogen, uh, moisture, uh, oxygen, and you're reaching a, a temperature that will kill the, uh, the pathogens and the weed seeds and you've got a, a very good, stable uh, low nutrient source when you're done. Uh, very often when I see composting, it's simply just stockpiling. So you've got to be careful if you go down that road. Uh, many times these operators are less aware of manure management, best management practices, and also some of the technical expertise that may be at their disposal, not having typically worked with uh, extension or NRCS or other sources of technical information. As Mike mentioned, uh, manure tests often are not done in the small operation. Very often the book values are used, but it's a good thing to keep in mind as far as trying to get them if you're working with someone who's really serious about trying to develop a nutrient management plan because the ration can be very non-uniform and the uh, manure content can vary widely. And the other thing is you may often have many different types of livestock on the same small farm. An analysis, it certainly helps uh, if you get enough to get a confident number. Otherwise, the book values have traditionally been the way that you go with the, with the small farms. Bedding has to be accounted for. Just like in a regular nutrient management plan, if you're coming up with spreading volumes, certainly the bedding is a large, large part of the, of the volume and uh, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Every operation is different because different operators will have different feelings about which bedding is the best and how much you know, the animals are the most comfortable. So when you're doing a, a nutrient management plan, uh, you know, just like a typical conservation plan that you might see, there's nothing like a spatial perspective, aerial photograph. And uh, the NRCS Web Soil Survey is an excellent source of an aerial photograph of course, as a bonus, you get the, all the soil information with that too. But many times a small farm uh, producer has not, is not accustomed to seeing their farm in this perspective and it really helps get a sense of exactly how close this field is to some of these sensitive resources. They may not realize uh, when, you're, when you're on uh, ground level with certain ground features, you just don't get the same perspective as you do with an aerial. So it's always a good good place to start, whether it's from NRCS toolkit or from any other uh, web soil survey or other internet mapping tools. Uh, it's a good idea to, to try to use that as a base map to develop the plan. Failing that, uh, this map is still better than nothing. Uh, this could be maybe the first step for the producer to try to develop at least a perspective of uh, certainly not to scale, but trying to visualize as close to scale as possible, trying to get a perspective of where the manure should go, where the sensitive areas are, what's the best, best um, route for, uh, especially if you're planning things like planning a potential storage pad, you know, as far as the circular route for uh, disposing of the manure, getting it into the storage and getting it from the storage into the field or garbage pickup, you know, going to, I mentioned. Now the phosphorus index is something on a small farm, if you're doing a simple plan, you're probably not going to get into, but it's still important to consider what goes into a phosphorus index and why it can be so valuable when you're 
evaluating what the risk is of the phosphorus in the manure reaching surface water features. Uh, when you're looking at the small farm, you're basically going to be looking at two main components, the Gwynwood phosphorus index, which is the transport risk and the source level. So the source level is things like deposit in, in the pasture or the manure that's spread in the field, nutrient content of that manure. Transport risk, you might be looking at how proximate is that to surface waters or what's the erosion rate. You, know, you might not run a, a Russell calculation, but oftentimes you can get a pretty good feel for it by looking at the soil type, looking at the size when you go out there after a rainstorm. You can tell generally if there's an erosion problem or not. So the phosphorus index may not be part of your calculation on a small plan, but it should be part of the thought process. Soil testing is still job one uh, if any of the manure is going to be spread uh, anywhere on the small farm. Uh, getting the, the nutrient content, uh, the phosphorus, potassium, the secondary nutrients, the pH, the organic matter, trying to get a handle on which fields, if you are spreading, could be the most beneficial. Uh, try to use the, the manure as a, a resource instead of just disposing of it as a weight. Still, still should be part of a plan, even on a small farm. Best management practices, I like to keep it simple and boil it down on some of these small farms to, to just a couple. Certainly when you look in the NRCS field office technical guide, there's hundreds of, of practices that to all different kinds of, of land use and correcting different problems that you could run into. But sometimes if you can boil things down, so these very simple points sometimes can really go a long way on a small farm to making sure that the uh, manure is used as a resource and it doesn't become a problem. Storage out of the floodplain, out of any concentrated flow areas, draws, things like that. Uh, try to limit as best as possible animal access to streams and surface water, access crossing. Uh, divert clean water from dirty water. By that I mean if you do have your storage or you do have concentrated livestock areas, upgrade it, you've got water coming into there potentially, divert it around it. That way the amount of water that's, uh, it's just the rainfall that's falling on the manure area instead of the additive effect of what's coming. Buffers or filter strips uh, alongside surface water features, absolutely always a good practice. And of course, spread the manure according to a nutrient management plan. Thanks, Fred. Um, one thing that we, we get off, asked often by uh, small producers is, is about pasture management. And probably our, our cooperative extension programs that are the most successful um, in recent years have been those that dealt with pasture management. Those have been um, primarily uh, not, not just a horse audience, but often an equine or horse audience, but also um, um, small ruminants, sheep and goats, and um, and uh, some ca some uh, some dairy operations as well. But particularly the horse op operations are very interested in pasture management. Um, unfortunately, off oftentimes they the, the pastures are on some of those farms are are, are not well managed. They're not mil well maintained, and and pasture and crop management are essential if we're going to manage manure properly. And I think, um, it, when I, when I, uh, like the example farm that uh, I gave you for 30, 30 horses, 10 cows on 30 acres is, is pretty tight. Uh, managing manure pro properly on something like that, a farm like that, is difficult. And that is very, fairly common what we, with what we might see on some smaller farms. As, we pr as this slide shows, less well-managed pastures are, are, uh, are very important for, um, for managing uh, manure properly. Uh, well. Uh, Lush pastures like this are going to take up more nutrients. They're going to be more productive. They're going to allow a greater stocking density, and ultimately, they're going to uh, present a lower risk of ag runoff and uh, potential for polluting streams and water bodies. On the other hand, um, we we sometimes see pastures like this as well, which is uh, more very much uh, bare, highly erodible ground, which uh, is going to be a, a nutrient management risk. As soon as we spread uh, nutrients onto this pasture. Um, uh, instead of being up, uh, taken up by, by the available grasses and forage, um, we're much greater risk of, uh, of runoff, polluting runoff from manure, uh, either from uh, those animals that are grazing or from what's spread on the pasture. So um, 
pasture management, uh, and, and if you go to the e-extension website, which um, uh, Mark will talk to you about in a few minutes, there's a section for pasture management under our small farms heading. So uh, this is a, this is really key, and we need to encourage smaller farmers to to, to manage their pastures appropriately. It's really a nutrient management concern. Um, how about sacrifice areas and exercise areas? Um, um, other than these horses being, you know, maybe a little over overfed, perhaps, um, they're being fed off the ground generally. Um, and and for exercise areas, I mean, we mean an area or a rest area, a sacrifice area where where animals will have access to feed, they'll have access to water, um, and they won't have direct access uh, to uh, any erodible land or any uh, streams, there won't be any streams that are near that uh, exercise or, or, or sacrifice area. And they'll, um, they'll allow us to, 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 manage, uh, um, to manage it as such. So um, what would I recommend for, a, for an exercise area and a feeding area? Certainly don't ever feed the animals uh, uh, anywhere near Near running water, near streams, uh, uh, feed areas should be well away from uh, from those, um, and when possible, they should be fed uh, fed off the ground. Hey, Fred. Well, you know, when you're working on a nutrient management plan, you it's of little use if the designed application rate that you came up with cannot be met. So certainly, calibration of the spreader uh, should be done uh, in every case, and there's every. Every extension uh, service has a, a methodology and your technical uh, about how that can be done. Uh, the spreaders many times are very small in some of these small operations, and it might not be the type of spreader that uh, Dalton would be used to working with, but you can still calibrate it using the same principles. Um, the type of spreader, the, the way the manure is spread is important consideration to certainly basic concepts like uh, staying off the steep slopes and observing setbacks away from surface waters, away from wellheads, away from property lines, all those kinds of things, common sense kind of things, certainly keep in mind. And it's also important to remember that, uh, unfortunately, most of these are going to be using solid systems. And uh, typically, solid systems are the least uh, accurate in terms of uniformity of application a conservation of ammonium if it's just surface spread, odor, uh, potential for compaction, and sometimes the timeliness if it's uh, if there's no manure storage as part of the part of the operation. Whereas conversely, if you have a liquid system that's incorporating, many times you get much more uniform application, better conservation of ammonium, less odor, uh, and less compaction provided you're not doing it on wet soils, of course. Timeliness because if you've got a liquid system, very good chance you've got storage. So it's just something to keep in mind in terms of the equipment that you're working with and trying to just make sure that the time that you spent working on the spreading rate can actually be met. Thanks, Fred. I want to just, uh, before we get into these uh, two examples I'm going to show you at the end, I want to just reiterate a couple points again that uh, some of the challenges of, of nutrient management playing on small farms and why professionals like, like you and like us um, you know, maybe find it uh, difficult at times to, to work with small farms. Number one, it's time consuming. Uh, the, the actual time of preparing a plan may not be that great, but in a, in a state like ours where it, the state is, is mandating uh, small producers to have uh, plans, there's probably, we have probably between three and 4,000 fairly small farms that are going to have to do their own nutrient management plan. So in that sense, it could be very time consuming. Um, like I said earlier, these farms often have limited resources. They don't have the availability of funds to, uh, to build proper manure storages and uh, other, uh, you know, uh, manure management systems. Again, probably po or possibly limited expertise. And finally, uh, perhaps a limited public commitment. Um, it was mentioned earlier, and I think someone asked a question uh, uh, in the chat room about this, about um, uh, funding, possible funding for uh, smaller farms. and. I think, generally speaking, not 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 too much is available for smaller farms. Uh, Equip funding generally goes uh, to uh, you know I would say generally speaking goes to larger farms, and um, at least in this in this state it would. And um, so there's there's maybe less of a public commitment to those farms as well. Okay, I want to go through two examples with you, and the first one is this it's it's nutrient management simplified, and again I'll point you to the extension website where you can.